my name is Gene Wanafried. I am relatively new to Highlands. I've been a member for just about a year now. We drive 25 to 30 minutes to come to church every day because we think that this is really reaching out to meet both our needs and the community needs. I've always enjoyed Disciple One. It has been uh, the best of the Disciple series for me, both personally as well as what I've seen from people that have participated in it. And quite often the people that participate say it is one of the best Bible studies they have had. People get to experience the entire Bible from Genesis through to Revelation. It gets them the opportunity to see things in context rather than just snippets and that is very rewarding to them. The other thing they like about Disciple One is that it is taught in a small group session. And we approach the scripture really in two ways. One is with expectation because we are looking at God's word, but we also approach it with a very questioning attitude. We really want to delve into the questions people may have had and no questions are off bounds. We look into predestination versus free will, whether we can change God's mind through prayer, whether Paul was pro or anti-women. And it's really going into these questions that a lot of people find great value with because let's face it, who of us haven't read the scriptures that have come away with questions that we were kind of wrestling with? And for me, each time I teach it, I learn something new. Uh, new questions get asked, and then any time I read the Bible, I always get exposed through the Spirit to new ideas, new thoughts, new interpretations. When you've come away from taking this study, you know what it means to be a disciple of Christ. You have a very firm grasp that Christianity is not a religion, that Christianity is a personal relationship with a living and an active God. I'm Wade Lowry, and I help with the youth uh, at Highlands. The kids here are a tight-knit group of kids. The intelligent, interesting, caring, and loving children who uh, want nothing but the best for this church. They love to help out wherever they can. We love to get out, go help folks, take some hikes, go skiing, water skiing, but then we know that uh, we can always come back and serve uh, right here at home at the church. A great event uh, that connects really personally with the youth at Highlands is the annual ASP mission trip. The kids love to help out around here in the community that is Five Points and Metro Birmingham but to branch out and go help folks in the hills of Kentucky, you know, rebuild a house. Uh, not only is it good for them spiritually, it's good for that community, and it's good for the community of the youth. Uh, it just helps bring them closer together. Uh, it's always refreshing to see how they come back from that, motivated, happy to be together. The connection in, uh, that that brings to the kids is, is always a really special event. The youth group really wouldn't be possible without the volunteers that we have here at Highlands. Um, the kids know that they are surrounded by a church and a congregation that are really willing to reach out and help them uh, with anything that they need. Being part of the youth really kind of set the tone of the way I believe and the way I think about things today. I know firsthand the experience of, of what a strong youth group means to a church um, and to the kids themselves. The Catechesis of the Good Shepherd is a um, program for children for spiritual formation that was started here at Highlands last uh, fall, both on Sundays and then we also implement the program with our Child Development Center. It is a sacred space that the church set aside just for atrium and presently um, our three through nine-year-olds are in that space. We work with a child one-on-one, -on -one. and as we teach a lesson to a, an older child in the atrium, then they in turn can teach those lessons to the younger children in the atrium. We like not to have too many adults in that space, um, again, understanding that Christ is the teacher. There are lessons that are um, in the atrium that are Bible lessons. For example, the Pearl of Great Price is a lesson. The Mustard Seed is a lesson. All the infancy narratives, the um, you know stories surrounding the birth of Jesus and the um, wise men and the shepherds, all of those are lessons. It's very powerful. And um, those simple images with those hand-crafted materials, um, just, we just have to show up, Christ is there. 
because we have such special ways of doing things in the atrium, quiet voices and respectful language and um, a more meditative time that we think is important in children's spiritual formation to have a quiet, reflective time. We so need to do that for children because the world does not offer that to them, a quiet, meditative time so that they can hear God, listen for God. It's a blessing to work with them. The goal is to prepare children for worship. They know more about the symbols involving baptism and communion than most adults do. We had an opportunity to actually um, put, place the cross on the table and light the candles as we reminded each other that Christ has died and Christ has risen and um, sang a song. And um, you just have to know that, that that is an organic experience for a young child that, that will carry them through and that when they experience communion in worship that that would be a deeper understanding. I think the, pro, the atrium program and the catechesis of the Good Shepherd is such an important lesson as we try and help children understand worship and more fully participate in worship and have it be meaningful in their lives. And as the church, it's so important that we offer an alternative to the rush and hurriedness of the world um, and give our children a chance to be quiet and meditative and reflective in the hopes of hearing and listening to God. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord.